If you're looking for a new favorite dessert, then you've definitely come to the right place. This chocolate and coffee tart is seriously one of the most incredible things that I've ever tried. And best of all, it's easy to make and will leave you smiling with every bite. Please sit back, relax and enjoy. Alright guys, let's start this off by adding 275 grams or 9.7 ounces of digestive biscuits into a food processor along with 90 grams or 3.1 ounces of melted unsalted butter and half a teaspoon or 2.5 grams of sea salt flakes. Let's then pop on the lid and process this up to create a delicious base for our tart and with this you can use any other plain biscuits or cookies. Once that's done, remove the bowl from the stand and tip the base mixture into a lightly buttered 24cm pie dish, making sure to get it all in there to avoid any wastage. Proceed by using the back of a spoon or any flat bottom surface to firmly press the biscuit base into the pie dish and we're also going to want to firmly build the base up the sides too, which is going to hold that delicious chocolate and coffee ganache which we're going to be making in the next step. Also the base will feel soft at this very moment, but once it's chilled in the fridge the butter will really firm this up. Once that's done and we have a nice firm and smooth tart base, let's then transfer this to the fridge to chill for one hour or you can leave it in there overnight to make this ahead of time. Now when the base is firm, let's add 350 grams or 12 ounces of dark chocolate chips or pieces to a mixing bowl along with 2.5 tablespoons or 35 grams of cubed unsalted butter and then just pop this aside for the time being. For the next step, we're going to need 3.5 tablespoons or 20 grams of fresh and finely ground coffee and to achieve that I'm going to be using the Bowdoin Bistro Burr Coffee Grinder. This premium electric burr grinder crushes beans effortlessly between stainless steel conical burrs rather than slicing them, making this a fantastic coffee grinder for aromatic coffee. With 12 grind settings, you can go from French press all the way up to espresso and everything in between with perfect ease. And for this recipe, we're going to be wanting the finest grind possible. On the top, we also have a clever preset timer, meaning you only grind the exact amount required. And on top of the bean hopper, there's a built-in measuring and timing guide. Next to it is the on off button and down the side of the machine is the main power button if you are going to have this constantly plugged in. Let's then turn this on and grind the 3.5 tablespoons or 20 grams worth that we need which will be collected in the borosilicate glass catcher underneath and once you've got the coffee that you require it easily slides out and comes with a neat little spoon leaving us with this fresh aromatic ground coffee. If you're interested in this Bodum coffee grinder be sure to click the link in the description and add this amazing machine to your kitchen. Now to make our chocolate coffee ganache, place a small saucepan onto your stovetop and add in the coffee that we just grinded, along with 2 tablespoons or 40 milliliters of water to help steep the coffee, and 1 and 1 quarter cups plus 1 tablespoon or 330 milliliters of heavy thickened cream, which is going to combine with the coffee and create an infusion, then turn this onto a medium heat. With this, give it a good whisk so that those flavors can become friends, and then we're going to heat this just until it's nice and hot, but don't allow it to get to a simmer. Once you start to see these bubbles on the edge of the saucepan, this then shows that it's hot enough so that we can give this another quick whisk before turning it off the heat and removing it from the stovetop. We can now pour the coffee cream through a sieve into the chocolate and butter, making sure to catch all of those ground coffee pieces as it won't dissolve and will leave a bad powdery texture. And with the coffee, this can then be discarded and not safe for a stock. Let's then mix the coffee cream into the chocolate and butter using the heat from the coffee cream to melt the ingredients which will then create the most amazing combination of flavors and a silky smooth chocolate coffee ganache. And I will say it's hard fighting the urge to literally drink this stuff, it's that good. This can now be poured into our chilled base, making sure to use a spatula to get it all in there to avoid wasting this amazing stuff. And gravity will take its course here so you won't have to spread or level it out. Once that's done, sprinkle over a small pinch of sea salt flakes that will literally make you salivate from every bite of this. Then once all of that's done, this can then be carefully transferred back into the fridge for one hour or overnight to set. Now when you're ready to get this finished, add four large free range egg whites into a stand mixer bowl, connecting the bowl to your machine along with the whisk attachment which will whip these bad boys up. Then turn the machine onto the highest setting and allow it to do its thing until the egg whites have soft peaks. Once that's achieved, we're then going to add in 3 quarters of a cup or 160 grams of caster sugar or fine sugar, but in two separate installments, so half now and half again once the first installment is fully mixed through, and continue to whip the egg whites until they have formed stiff peaks and are extremely silky smooth. Once that's done, the machine can then be turned off and we can remove the whisk and bowl from the stand mixer, which leaves us with these beautiful silky egg whites, and now we're ready for the best step in this recipe. 
Now with the base and ganache being set, let's add the whipped egg whites or meringue on top of the ganache, trying our best not to go over the rim of the base, and once all of that's on, evenly spread the whipped egg whites or meringue over the top, but be very gentle and try not to push it down too much, otherwise you'll deflate them and it will become flat. Once evenly spread, use the side of a spatula or a fork to create little peaks that stand up tall all over the top, and this will set us up for the best part. Talking about that, we're then going to need one of these kitchen blow torches, which I'll leave a link for in the description below. And with a low flame, we're going to toast the top of the meringue, which not only looks absolutely amazing, but creates the most incredible toasted marshmallow flavor. But do be careful with this, as it can easily burn the top if you're not paying full attention. Now that that's all done, it's time to remove this from the pie dish, but I will warn you and say that you have to be very gentle here, as it's extremely delicate. Most pie dishes have a bottom that you can push from the bottom up, which will make it a lot easier to get out, but if you don't have one of those, you will more than likely need to serve this straight out of the dish to avoid the risk of this whole tart just falling apart. To slice this, I recommend using a hot dry knife, which will allow you to slice through it nice and clean. And to remove each slice, I recommend using a palette knife, which is flat and made for this kind of thing, but a knife can easily do the trick. This then leaves us with these beautiful slices of our chocolate coffee tart with the most delicious toasted meringue on top. And yeah, before anyone says anything about this being smeared, I can guarantee you won't be complaining once you're eating this in a minute. This is seriously one of the tastiest desserts. The final and most important step is then to place this onto a serving plate, grab a fork or spoon, and we can then dig in. So there we have it. This recipe right here will easily serve eight to 12 people depending on the size of your portions, but I'm sure you can eat it on your own. And to store it, we can place this in the fridge in an airtight container for up to four days. And we can also place this in the freezer in an airtight container for up to six months. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button. It really does help me out and consider subscribing along with hitting that bell notification next to it so you never miss when I upload. Also, let me know in the comment section down below what is your favorite dessert. Thanks for watching, stay safe and enjoy.